In this beginner tutorial, we're going to use After Effects to create a convincing UFO flyby video that's designed to look like handheld footage shot with a cell phone. Once we've launched Adobe After Effects, we'll see the start screen. And while it does a lot of important stuff, we're going to start from scratch with a blank project, which is After Effects default. So we can just close it. First things first, we need to add some footage to our blank project. File Import works, of course. But there are lots of ways to do things in After Effects, and a quicker way is to simply double-click on the project panel to open up the Import dialog box. Or, if you have your footage window open in your Finder or Explorer, like I have here, we can also simply drag elements from their folder into the project panel. Whichever way you choose, make sure to import Background 4K, Corn Moon, Lamp Post, UFO, and UFO Audio. Clicking on each element reveals important information at the top of the project panel. Background is a 4K video clip shot at 24 frames per second. Corn Moon is 1280 by 720 at 2997 frames per second. Lamp Post is an Adobe Photoshop file with transparency. And UFO is a simple 3D model created in Cinema 4D and exported as a QuickTime animation file with transparency. One way to tell if an element has transparency is if the description includes millions of colors plus. The plus usually indicates an alpha channel, which is used for transparency. We can also double-click any element to open it in the Clip Viewer, where we can play back the clip with the spacebar and click on the checkerboard at the bottom here to confirm that this element is, in fact, on a transparent background. And the last clip is our audio file. In After Effects, we do our design work using compositions. Making one is as easy as selecting a menu item, using its associated shortcut, which you can see in the menu, or in our case, we're going to create a new composition by selecting our background 4K element and dragging it onto our comp icon at the bottom of the project window, the one that looks like a little film frame. You'll notice that quite a few things have changed on screen. A new item has shown up in the project panel, named the same as our background layer. Click it and see that the new comp has inherited the size and the frame rate of the clip we just dragged on the comp icon which is perfect for our project. If we want to rename the comp so it's more distinctive in the project panel, we can select it, press Enter on the keyboard, and edit it. In my case, I'll get rid of the 4K at the end. In addition, we now have a comp window here, which is where we can see the results of our work, and a timeline, where we control animation, navigate time, and stacking order, among other things. Like most other Adobe apps, there are a lot of panels available to us, some of them visible by default, and others accessible through the window menu. One panel that we'll use again and again is the preview panel, which contains playback controls so we can check our work in full motion. You can also initiate playback by tapping the spacebar, as long as the comp window or the timeline window is active when you do. Panels can be docked together in tab groups. For this project, the important panels to have open are the ones I've mentioned so far, as well as the Effects and Presets panel, and the Info panel. These should all be open by default, unless you've loaded another workspace or otherwise modified things. If they aren't visible, you can just reload the standard workspace, or if you don't want to do that, you can choose them individually from the Window menu. Make sure they're all open and available, and you're ready to start working on our UFO project. Now that you've imported assets, you're ready to start working. You can also open the Part 2 project file and just start from there. The special effects shot that we're trying to accomplish is relatively simple. I shot a wide-angle lockdown shot of Manhattan from Eagle Rock, New Jersey, which offers a spectacular panoramic view of New York City. We're going to composite some convincing full moon footage into the scene to give us an excuse to zoom into our large background. After a few seconds, a UFO will fly through the scene and will animate our view to simulate a camera following the move. 
And to finish it all up, we'll add some effects to make everything appear as if it's really in the same scene together. We'll wiggle our camera to create a more convincing handheld camera effect, and we'll add some audio to help sell the story. The first step is to combine our elements in the big background comp, starting with the background movie and our moon movie. Make sure the time marker is on the first frame of the comp. In the first segment, we notice that the moon clip is a different size and running at a different frame rate from our background layer. We don't care at all because After Effects is happy to combine elements of different sizes and frame rates in the same comp. You'll see that the moon comes in at its smaller native resolution, which is fine. I'm going to scale it down a little more, in fact, by just dragging a corner point while pressing the shift key to constrain proportions. If I watch the info panel as I drag, I can get feedback about the scale, and I'll stop when I'm just a little above 50%. Next, I'll drag the moon to this area slightly left of the center of the comp. I'll also zoom in slightly using the roll wheel on my mouse, or if I don't have a mouse, I can use Command plus and minus on a Mac, or Control plus and minus on Windows, or I can use the zoom pop-up at the bottom of the comp window, and even though the spacebar is used to start and stop playback, it can also be held down to quickly access the pan tool, which allows us to drag with the mouse to reposition the screen, which we'll do now to arrange the screen like we see here. Down in the timeline, you'll notice that we now have two layers, the background and the moon. If you're familiar with Adobe Photoshop, a lot of what you see here may look familiar. You can turn visibility on and off by toggling the eyeballs, Change stacking order just by dragging. If you play around with this, make sure the moon ends up back on top. And if you click on the toggle switches slash modes button at the bottom, you can even reveal all of the familiar blend modes from Photoshop, which allow you to mix pixels together. Unlike Photoshop, however, everything you do in After Effects is non-destructive by default, so you can always play around without fear of messing things up permanently. There are lots of switches and buttons in the timeline, too. Notice these triangles to the left of the layer name. Click on the triangle for the moon layer, and you'll see some really important stuff. Click next to transform and reveal the geometric properties for the layer. This is where you can fine-tune how a layer looks, and even animate these properties. If we make sure our modes are visible by using the toggle button, choose one of the light modes, which occupy this second section, I settled on Classic Color Dodge, which I like because it picks up some of the underlying grain, which will help sell the final composite. This is obviously blown out, and the layer creates a noticeable sharp edge, but fortunately both of these things are easy to fix. Let's start with the sharp edge. Making sure the moon layer is selected, choose the Rectangular Mask tool, and drag out a rectangle that's as wide as the layer, but not quite as tall it should visibly clip off the bottom of the moon, like so. Once you've done this, notice that a new property has shown up in the moon layer, called Mask 1. Twirl this open, find Mask Feather, click and drag this value up to about 180. This solves our hard edge problem, but may seem like overkill. Fortunately, it also makes it seem like the moon is emerging from a soft cloud, which I like. Drag the time marker and see how it moves. Next, let's take down the opacity of the moon. It doesn't need to be nearly this bright. I'll drag the opacity down to just over 50%. It's looking better, but there are still some light spill and color bleeding that looks artificial. Some basic color correction effects will fix that. Applying effects in After Effects is easy. The Effect menu lets you easily rummage through hierarchical menus to see the hundreds of effects and filters available to you. Once you get to know what's in there, you'll probably prefer the Effects and Presets panel because of its nifty search feature. If you click in Search and type Levels, for example, you can quickly locate the Levels filter and apply it by dragging it from here onto the layer, either in the timeline or the comp window. This automatically opens up the effect control panel over here, where we can interact with the levels filter just like in Photoshop. 
In this case, we're going to drag this top left triangle to the right, which will clip the darker pixels to black and get rid of the extra haze. There's still a little unwanted blue color overwhelming the effect, so let's go back to the Effect and Presets panel and type Hue to bring up the Hue Saturation effect. Since the Moon layer is still selected, we can apply it by simply double-clicking it and then drag the Saturation slider down to get rid of the blue. This is looking pretty good. While we're still zoomed in, let's preview our Moon effect by tapping the spacebar. Once the moon gets going at full speed, we can see that it's already starting to look pretty nice.